technician who installed my home security system said that the sign was the biggest deterrent. Probably is. So if we're concerned about safety of children, shouldn't that be more of our concern than our legal problems? Well, I, and like I, just like I opened out, I think it does impact the, the security plan as a whole, and I don't think everyone will fall on the deterrent side of, of the security camera discussion. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure where I fall on that either. Um, and I will say also, um, to speak to um, you guys opening sentence there, Employees will be notified in advance when video cameras and other recorded equipment is installed in the workplace. I, I do not have an objection to uh, employees on campuses being notified if there's going to be additional camera work done on the campus. I think that um, I think that's it's good for them to know. Um, but and you know yes, when we buy camera equipment that's going to be installed, it goes through board docs and approved and all that with the school's name, but who looks at that? You know what I mean? Well, I know a few people look at it. But, um, but it'd be nice if they are notified like you guys are, are saying. You know, so. We had a situation last week where folks were saying, why are cameras being installed in my office or in my work area? Because they were running cable and they assumed that Apparently they were using the, the office as a password, but they didn't know that. They, they thought that the cameras were being installed there because of the, the cables running through the ceiling with people working in there. Well, notification would help with that. And plus it will reduce some misconceptions also because I, as I was discussing this, I know where there was somebody who thought there was a camera going in the room and it was just a, a wireless hotspot um, for internet uh, access. So, you know, I, you know, I don't know if I could tell the difference myself. I would assume that our student population is going to continue to grow um, faster than our building plans are. Um, and I know when I'm out in the schools, I see rooms that um, have been cut up into sections and little tiny cubbies that are now being used as offices and we have um, a list of areas where we're saying that should not be recorded so then cameras are installed what happens if next year or the year after when we're moving locations around trying to find room for everybody that then one of the places that we've agreed will not have surveillance now is there with the camera. I think it'll just be have to brought, be brought to our attention and a work order to have it removed. Um, uh, definitely. I mean, we've agreed that it's not going to be in an area, and as we're squeezing and yeah. cramming and getting everywhere we can, we definitely need to make those adjustments uh, prior to any confidential or instructional uh, classroom. Is that something that needs to be stated in the contract? Yeah, I could definitely see yes. an IP meeting or something. Because the, the policy is written that this is kind of with addressing who the back door would allow those cameras to stay if the superintendent felt that they needed to be there for whatever reason, even though it's now used for a therapy room or whatever. I mean, the, the policy has passed is, is has lots of loopholes and and that's why we wanted to tighten it up in the contract. Well, I, I stopped there and spoke with the superintendent um, just to make sure because I knew it would come in discussion today and she wanted me to reemphasize to you guys that while the policy does give her the authorization, really it puts her on the hook, to be honest with you, for proper areas to be covered. She wanted to me to ensure to you guys that she had no intentions of camera being put in classrooms. And I said, you have no intention as that can go in language. And she said, I've said it, so it goes in language if it needs to go there. I said, all right, well, it'll come about, so we'll talk. And that's, and that's you know, I'm glad she said that, but 
as the same token. We don't know, I mean, she could get a presidential job tomorrow. And suddenly we're, we have somebody else who thinks Amber should be in every classroom, and I can do that because the policy says it. Well, and, and as you remind me before, in times that we've talked about, we know that the contract will supersede uh, the board mm -hmm. policy. So I think that's something that that's we valuable right. there. So, good. We're at least in agreement on that. We're just needing to work out the language then. Okay. So, um, hearing what you guys have stated on here today, um, and, and some concessions made on both sides, and still some points we'll probably might not see directly eye to eye on. Would you like me to take both pieces back, rework and bind based on our discussion, and then we bring it back at our next session and hopefully hammer out the, the few little aspects that are done? I don't want people getting minor discipline based on video camera footage. It's hard to figure out how to put that in black and white and not compromise the, what's needed um, for other purposes. So let me let me work on that. Yeah, it's so it, it, it is. It's a slippery slope. Or possibly in your where it starts with the with the however in your paragraph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that is the main one that's really not so good for our side. Mm -hmm. Let's say. So if you possibly could take that out and put in one statement that we have in ours that says, you know, just a phone reaction, continuing, whatever, but then add at the end of yours, like what Clay said, at the mm -hmm. end of that statement, without an investigation. Okay. Or where well, I think it was from some okay, got from Clay, but they might have gotten it from Clay. You know, yeah, I'll trust me, you know how I, it goes. Yeah. Thanks, so, Bill. Oh, I know. Okay, yeah, I, I definitely or think about that, that at least, and then we go maybe from there. Absolutely. Well, I think we've all got the best interest, and, and <coughs> we want to make sure everybody protected, not just safety and security, but in all regards. All right. So that's security camera language. We had our best and brightest update. Um, I've got one piece of new language uh, proposed as our first reopener. I don't know if you guys have something you want to put forward first or something you guys. Well, go ahead. Let's take a look and see what you got. Again, not perfect language, but I definitely need feedback and assistance on this, and uh, I'll tell you why we're doing this too. There's definitely going to be some experts in the room that live and breathe this probably better than we do every day. So uh, hopefully some of you guys will be able to speak to some of this. We just came from a meeting where another school where some of this was an issue. Um, part of, you know, when we left full book, we looked at this pretty heavily um, in, our, in our last bargaining. And coming away, one of the byproducts of some of the adjustments we made in section 14 uh, was we had teachers that were desiring the feedback that that was collected and discussed in from the learning walks and we had principals who realized they were bound by contract and couldn't necessarily provide that um, in a direct way so while I, I do think it, it's had some positive impact and it and it it, it was able to you know, provide feedback for departments and grade level groups as a whole. You had individual teachers that desired 
um, what could be offered there. And part of what we discussed last time was uh, when, we, when we were going through this, was we, we didn't want it. The hard part was we wanted to say that this is non evaluative. But then we, I remember discussing, well, anytime you look at something, you're evaluating it. So it pretty much straightforward. I wanted to be able to state it's not part of the team evaluation uh, model and that it's collected for and that it's not part of any of our official evaluation and it will only be used to provide relative feedback and assistance to individual teachers, uh, grade level and department groups, and their overall school. And I guess the word relative on the feedback was I was trying to figure out a way to where you know, the, the whole school, we'd like to give an overview of how it went if, if, if folks are walking through, if, if administrators are out and, and what they see and, and give some high points. But at the same time, we don't want the whole school to say, look at so-and-so and see what they did. So I feel like relative was, I, I'm not sure I've arrived where we can be there, but I want to be able to provide these teachers with the feedback that, that they desire. And I like that you talked about other person other than district school administrative supervisory personnel. That's nice. I like that. Mm -hmm. But now we're seeing social work or uh, guidance counselors, mental health liaisons, CRTs, uh, other people who are not <coughs> supervisory personnel doing the learning walks and giving feedback accordingly and so we may need to um, so you're having instructional personnel providing or, i mean this says administrative supervisory personnel damn i like that but now we're seeing that blossoming out to to anyone and their brother are, are being told they have to do learning loss. And so I think limiting who can do them might be a good idea. Well, it is That's limited the that they have to be authorized in order to enter those environments and the authorization will come through your, your administrators. Can, it, can some teachers and administrators speak to some of this? Sure. Well, the way that I read this is other authorized personnel would include your CRTs and lit coaches. Like, I shouldn't have to give 24 hour notice to go walk a classroom. Is that correct? Right. Right. You, you but want that's those to be your job. Right? Right. But it's still, you know, there, so it comes into is it evaluative? And, and I'm not doing that for that purpose like a lit coach or a CRT or someone in that type of role. But if you follow up, I think the 24 hour notice is when it's four or more. Right, right. it's four or more. Yeah. After well, I know and, that when we do the region and our region oh, folks come okay. in, mm -hmm. um, a region, they're supervisory, so that's a part of the team. Region one, region two, region three. Um, and I think they have four or five different people that's within their group that walks with them. Right. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't have CRTs, I've had all these other folks, mm -hmm. no more than a literacy coach that really works with the teachers with reading. Then maybe we if they have separated for saying that these one portion would be more for the, um, the county personnel, the regional people, whatever you want to call them, exactly. and then one for the schools because the schools, so many of the schools, and I will say many of them have been elementary, but many of them are coming to us and saying that they have CRTs, they have literacy coaches, they have guidance counselors, they have all kinds of people that are coming into their rooms right. and observing, and then they are reporting back, they're using whatever tool, whatever, they're reporting back as if they saw something, as if it's, yes, it's not evaluative, but they're reporting back to the person doing evaluations and saying this is what I'm seeing and this is what I'm da 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 da. Now the CRT learning, uh, literacy coach, others are going. I mean, they're they're going in. It doesn't. They don't have to go in on a learning walk. Right. They can go in with the teacher. Anytime. 
any time to help the teacher. To provide right. support. So, so we're saying, like, do they need to be on the learning walk if that this is the purpose? But they're doing, they're using those tools, whatever the tool is, they're using those tools and when they go in and they see those items, they're using the tool and then reporting it back to the administrator. And then therefore, that CRT or that coach or whomever, they are then doing it, I don't want to say evaluative, but In the teachers life. see it as evaluative because then they're going back, they're not seeing it as a learning tool. So that CRT or that person is not using it to help the instructor, in other words. Well, my question yeah, is because you person. have, you have, and I don't know whether or not you're speaking of specific, you said elementary, but I do know mainly, at, mainly elementary, mainly elementary but I do know that we, maybe if it's other than the two schools that are in DA, that is state, there are certain guidelines that the state provides that they, that must happen within those schools. So I don't know whether or not. It's not even those okay, all right. Then that's that's the only I mean, one that I was trying to because I know that when the state comes in, the state requires they give additional funds for additional folks, coaches and whatever to be hired. And I know that it is a requirement for those coaches and everyone to go in and actually observe and see. So and that's why I was asking. Let's let's you're looking for honest feedback. Here's how this thing works. They over the last couple of years they've changed the the principals meetings and such you guys know this and i'm going to just tell it as it is and it becomes this giant role going for a walk okay and we get emily and we get whoever is with emily that day and we get the region and we get the blah 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 blah, blah. and quite honestly i'm going to speak just for me but tony yes. and amy i'm fine with it because i teach high school seniors okay and if they want to show up Bring them in. I don't need to. I don't even need the warning ahead of time because I know what I'm doing. Um, he said arrogantly. Because um, I have because I have a principal that supports me, and I have an assistant principal who does. Uh, was it called learning walk? I can't remember. It was the one we took the name. Classroom walk. Classroom walk. Classroom walk. Classroom walk. Classroom walk. Classroom right. So I mean, we that was an important one because we didn't need another observation, but I think. The, the came down from your areas that they had to do like 10 a week or some yeah. absurd number. So they're in there all the time. So from my perspective, you know, I'm covered. But when you bring the same thing into a bunch of eight-year-olds, I mean, that teacher is, you might as well throw her in with the lions, I mean, trying to get the order back and such. And, and they're, they're doing all the latest and greatest chat. It's like, let's leave little post-its on the door with little notes like, I love what I saw this, and uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's just a disruptive cluster hyphen um, for, for those poor people. So I guess, if I'm asked, let me ask this. It, if you have a, the district, the meeting with principals, okay? Those are, how often do you guys have those? Once a month. Once a month, and then, is it at the same school? No. And does any school have it twice in a year? No. Okay, and some schools likely are not hit within the course of a year. Correct. Right? So what would Maybe what do you guys once every two years okay. one time. Okay. Like I was hit last year. Mm -hmm. We had a visit, but I don't have a visit this year. But you right. have this year. <laughs> now the only thing that I do if we decided to do as an administrative team this year, because we would walk and then we would come back and share what we decided this year was to walk as an admin team mm -hmm. and we walk in together and then we're able to come back and just really collaborate and discuss what, and you know what's good and then teacher. we give feedback to and speaking as a teacher in that environment it's welcome because we want consistency between the assistant principals but we have a unique environment i mean yeah, everybody that walks in that classroom is supported but I'm not sure you can say that it's unique. Uh, I think you, there's there's schools all across the district that that are doing it the right way. Some other principals, y'all care, especially from an elementary perspective. Yeah, I, I, I was just speaking in, in, sorry, in, for, in the, for the elementary. Um, the people in my school who use the, the walk, the learning walk tool, are my assistant principal and myself. Yeah. We collaborate, we give feedback. But the instructional framework of the district. Is, is reflected in the learning walk tool. And there are times where my literacy coach will go in and 
work with third grade when we're getting close to um, track testing and those kinds of things to make sure that are in feedback is given and there's never nobody has ever expressed to me any kind of concern with that uh, yeah, they, they like the feedback they do but she's not using the digital form it doesn't mean she couldn't but we don't do that's just not how we do it um, but we've had great experiences with both our leadership coach and CRT the counselors and anybody else are going in typically they're observing kids for specific yes. scales and things no. like that related to, mm -hmm. to those mm -hmm. needs for that's, that's why it should be yeah. that's why it should be so that's but, the but that's not what's it's happening I everywhere can only speak to my school I know you can only, you you guys only when we do at principal meetings we all talk and share and we talk and share based on what we've seen while we're there on that school but we also talk I mean the networking we have there is great, and we talked about what's going on at your school, what's going on, and I really hear all very positive things, at, at, at least in that environment, um, regarding the, the reaction and the response from teachers when they are. Um, and I can, I can say, as far as learning tool at my school, it's only administrators that do anything into a tool uh, at all. Um, and if, if a CRT or a literacy coach or a math coach or anybody else goes into a classroom, Anything that the teacher is referring to is back to the instructional framework, which is every single thing that's in the learning tool. So it's basically just the same thing. So if they they may say, hey, you know, can you tell me, um, you know, look for this, and they can say, well, I saw this many students engaged in this collaborative thing. I saw them using um, talk stem. So it's a it's a way to give feedback specific to the instructional framework of best practices. On the, for the and that would be the same at a literacy coach meeting. But we would use a hard copy paper of yes. the learning walk tool, but it's nothing recorded and it's looking at instructional practices, trends, exactly. For Correct. But then you see in many of the literacy coaches are told you have to go into the end rooms a week. Okay. Well, or you have to do X amount a week, or you have to do this and this and this. That takes out a lot of their time, and then they can't go in and help a teacher where they really are supposed to be helping. Helping teachers. That's foreign to me. That's foreign to me. I know two schools right now. Well, and beyond me, I mean, I think it's something we need to discuss with that. And, every, well, of and I'm going to be honest here because every time we bring up something like that, like this, and other things, then you go to the school and you contact you know, the principal or whoever, it's usually principal, contact principal. Oh, well, I'm not doing that. And I'm just being honest here. I'm in the bin right now. I'm being honest because but you contact the principal. But then you get you're forgetting the next step. Why did you contact the, the building union? rep gets called in and why did you call the union about this? Why did you call them? What's We're a family. Call them, come to me. It's not always us calling the union though. Yeah. It's not the building reps all the time. I know. Most of the time it's not. But that's usually the, the that's, step that's, that happens. That's the step that happens. If I can sum up and then up. and then it's kind of like the, the parent, you know, or whatever. But it, you know, however you want to say it, but then it's like done and over with because it's like okay, well, the principal said it wasn't happening, so it's not happening. If I can sum it up another way, um, as Wednesday. Somebody of authority is going to come into our classroom. It's going to feel observational and evaluative. Okay, and then you want to put that on us. That's fine or whatever. When it's clearly defined, like we did with the one more time, not the learning walk, the the walkers. Walkers. Thank you. Uh, well, not the observations, right? No. Okay. Um, you know, it was. There's an obligation for the administration to make sure the standards are being taught. Got it. Check the box. Um, I'm not being rated on that, but it still it, it still feels like an evaluation. And when they get to be significant, I know we were going forward with the principals meeting. But I use the principal meeting as an example. That's not the only time. Do you feel like it might feel like that because they've been prohibited contractually from providing feedback to the teachers? No, I feel like uh, the ones that I'm specifically thinking about are useless and um, really are there to justify their job. They've offered no value to me, I'm speaking just for me. And Mama knows I can get specific if you don't want me to. Well, but, but I think, I, I think the, the direction and intent of the tool, of the learning walks, and any CRT or any reading person being in your classroom is 
to provide support for all the feedback and to work as a collaborative team to, as educators because they're not just administrators they're educators just like teachers are to try and move to school and provide the best experience for kids and I, and I want I, I need help removing the negative connotations out of it and I feel like teachers not being in the dark and being provided the feedback from why or what people saw while they were in there is is, is a key cog that's missing there and I want you you had something you were going to say for Ms. Gosh, when you see. Oh, I was just saying what we kind of done at the request of the teachers is they wanted to walk, not using just having the tool in front of them, not scoring it, so that they could have the conversation of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So that was out there. So sometimes those teachers do participate in that with, they're not recording anything, they're just looking at it. Mm -hmm. And I was also to go back to like, most of the time if they're using a form, I feel like, not the learning block, but it's like MTSS. We're in the intervention, the documentation that we have to have, which we have to record. So I see that a lot with the literacy coaching guidance comes, which is pretty much it. I don't see them in the learning block. And I can add, the only, only other time that I can think of that we've had someone, an instructional going in, is because that person is mentoring that person. And say, for example, in my math department, I have five new teachers. Mm -hmm. And so that department chair, has asked whether or not she can go in to provide assistance. So yes, she probably goes in, but it's not so much of a learning walk, learning walk, but she is going in to provide some assistance and some strategies that may improve that, that teacher's uh, And then we know that's gonna happen. We know CRTs, the literacy coaches, their, their job is to support the teacher and improve that, that instructional practice. It's when the learning walk then turns into a cattle call and I've got a class I'm trying to teach and there are now 11 people walking in the door. That's not a current. That's what we just said. Once maybe every two years you'll host the principal or AP meeting or whatever the case may be. I, I do think, think it, I think it happens yeah. more often when, because we have regional people coming mm -hmm. through like um, tomorrow I am I'm having regional people come to look specifically at phonics I mean that's just my personal example now we have the, the but, curriculum the people, curriculum people. Uh, who uh, to your point Chad as far as you know pushing back yeah. I did it through mom and all the rest of it and you know I'm there. but now we have in the one the, the area I reported to which is college and career you know that whole thing has been shifted around again Move somebody, and we move some, you know, we rotated some ball tires, and, and you know, now I have to start from from scratch again. They'll come in, and I'll see if any of them add value. Right now, I was asked by my principal to be fair and to go attend a meeting, to be supportive. It was absolutely waste of my time, and I have expressed that to my principal, and I won't be going to the next one. Now, there's a new team in now. So I'm going to probably have to go to the next one and give that person a shot. Um, and I'm going to, but this is a cycle for me. Again, high school, rigor, but it is more than the principal's meeting. I get the curriculum, I get the regional, I get the whatever. And again, it's like, come on in, let me show you how it's done. Because you're stealing my best practices anyway when I go to your meetings. <laughs> can I make a, a comment on this as well? Is I do think it does happen more frequently than just maybe once a year. I do too. Okay. okay. However, they can still say no. The employee can still correct. So is that something? Is it well, her choice in this? But, but the issue uh, being, think about it. Many of your employees are annual contract. They're not going to say no to anything because so they no, know. What? Um, no, please, I don't want to visit tonight because there's because we do still today give them notice. All right, next Wednesday we're going to have the principals meeting here. We're going to be walking classrooms. Would you allow someone to come in? Um, you know, I'm just wondering if that's. I mean, when we, we have that for the region meeting, I mean, when we have for a regional, like a, we, we had one, we had one not too long ago. Right. right. But mm -hmm. so what we did, we had the region and it, it was broken into, we divided into like five teams. Right. There was no more than three to four per team, pretty much three to four. And basically um, they were asked what subjects you would like to see. And we kind of looked at those subjects and at the time frame in which it was happening. 
So there may be some people on the planet period, we couldn't get in to see those, but we saw those folks, but we talked to those, talked to them prior to. So, so I'm just wondering if, if the concern could be just wordsmith a little to say that, you know, the same teacher shouldn't be asked to hold these visits multiple times in the course of a semester or something like that because maybe that, I don't know if that's the issue because this seems to get, the wording on this to me doesn't seem bad. Now, let me ask but this I, question. We have the learning walks taking place, the district folks, but then I mean, are we also seeing the administrators doing their own learning walks, mm -hmm. bringing in ESE, guidance counselors, mm -hmm. other folks, oh. and just doing it within the school, calling it a learning walk? Uh, call a lot of those schools. Like I said, the, the my assistant principal was on this and said, I, I, I have to do 10 of these a week. That's too much. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no problem. You know, because it's they're welcome. Um, but again, I, but I again, can't speak so, for so I, The most complaints I've heard about this is from elementary. You so know, we, as far we've as got as the, the, the district folks, and, and that's all well and good. They're breaking in the team to three or four, but then we have some administrators, not present here, obviously, who are now taking that going, well, if learning walks are good, then I'm going to invite my entire 12 member leadership team to do it all at once. I need to know where a 12 member leadership team is going to go. I can tell you. Beverly Shorts. 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 Beverly one hundred school in the state. Mm -hmm. Well, had, any had, other school besides that one? I had my region team <coughs> on uh, Friday, and when they divided up <coughs> my people on my team, there were groups of there were five groups of two people, two to three, uh, one group of three. Mm -hmm. and we had ours Tuesday. It was the exact same thing. And we did one. So what happens at the elementary level? You ask the teacher about coming in to observe this mainstream classroom, and the teacher says that's fine. And then that morning, her student with ASD is spinning and flapping and just having a really bad day. Does she get to say this isn't going to be good? For I mean, I, I would hope she would say that, but the fact that the administrator was present when that occurred, you would hope maybe there's some assistance that would come as a result of that. I mean, I don't. They, they, they might not talk about it, right? I mean, I don't. I I haven't seen where, but I'm not there. So, but in my experience as a teacher and a school-based administrator. I haven't seen an administrator says I don't care whether this kid's you know lost it. I'm coming in here and I'm fixing the performance learning walk tool or even an evaluation back when it was an evaluation. I don't see I'm that. I'm not happen. insinuating that that principals are saying that, but I'm just it's more do teachers know that they can? Well, maybe that's the, the wording we should have. Well, that's maybe what I was trying to say. Is where are exactly. you going with I mean, this? Are you saying you don't want them in there all the time? Or do you not want them to bring the learning walk tool? Or be specific on what sort of the issue is? Because this written the way it is is fine, at least in my opinion. What I've seen. I have in agree because then the key the key discussion that we got in was after conferring with the teacher. I mean, one of the things I mentioned to Emily when we were talking about this, it's like you know, you want to really make points with the with the teachers. You got an administrative assistant. Send them a note. Before you're showing up and say, "Hey, I'm coming in the other, the next day. Is that a good is that a good time for you?" Man, talk about developing relationships. But you know, I guess logistically it's difficult. But still, Chad, I have one suggestion. You said something about the word relative not fit. Maybe if you move the word relative from before feedback into in front of the word to in that same sentence, so it says feedback and assistance relative to individual teachers. Relative to individual. 
But I think if Just you guys have concerns, maybe it's the addition of those Same other one. little parts okay. too. Sure. Well, the only thing that's been okay. added is what's underlined. No, I'm just saying, I, I'm, what I'm hearing is that I think there might be, they have some additional concerns that may not be included in here. Okay. Yeah, Unless I misunderstand. didn't have a learning walk in their room. So, you know, the teacher that would get upset if there was not a learning walk in their room. Yeah, well, I, so. I guess well, whether the <laughs> value, perceived value is size. I guess I'm, I have trouble seeing what the threat of the, I get it where, when, when anomalies occur, those need to be handled. And, and we, I would like to have the information on either my side or the academic side, and then we talk together usually so we can resolve that. But with good intent and with, with language similar to this, what is the threat of it? I don't, I don't see how it impacts teachers in a negative way. Well, I think what Stewart is saying is the threat is, is when someone who is not my supervisor comes in okay. and now it becomes punitive. Correct? Or perceived to be Or perceived to be punitive. So it's hard to work on perception a lot of times with words. So, I mean, I think that's where, where you've got schools that, I can tell you, like many old high schools, I, I've seen the numbers, the ball, pure volume of, of what they're doing with these tools are, it's, it's, it's high. You mean the only A high school in the... Uh, and there, <laughs> there you have it. So my point is exactly. So, but it's hard work of teachers, but it's hard work of educators as a whole. And I don't want to do anything that's going to demoralize a teacher anyway. And I know we got newbies that they get a little freak. But guess what? You know, it's it's going to be okay. And you hope that you see, wow, they are this fragile and they are struggling with this area, and that's where the assistance can come in as a result of what's been witnessed. Building on that, you know, the perception it, it, again, and you touched on this just a little earlier. It just sounds like a communications thing. It's like too academic to the principals. You know, there could be a perception that these tools are going to be used to evaluate blah blah blah. Can you make it clear that again? That it's not a plot, and we have to go out to the membership and plus and say, you know, guys, you can say no and give a, you know, if there's a real reason, you can say no. You can say this isn't a good time, and you won't, you will not be penalized. And if you are penalized, come back and we'll deal with it. It's communication, I think. It is. So, and, and I can and I can leave from here, and you know, and I'll be sitting with with Dr. Weisskopf and her team and saying, hey, where, how can we? Language aside, how can we change this perception? So when you're coming, or anybody's coming, or CRT's coming, that they're they know that they're there for altruistic reasons and not for any penalization. Because that's why I really wanted to hammer on this isn't part of the team evaluation law um, when, when you're coming in. So, so question. Yeah. Um, the CRTs, coaches, whomever, anybody else besides the administrator that goes into a classroom, are they actually using the tool or are they just looking at it and then looking at the instruction that's going on? Here's what I believe to be true, and, and I might need some correction on this and I will go back and ask. I do not think that, I do not think that Holy, and what's most frequent is people outside of the administrators that are entering things into this tool. If a CRT comes in, they might reference framework that exists within the tool that aligns with the academic vision and direction of the district and take notes and things of that nature, but I do not think they enter any type of data into that tool. Can is I, that correct? Can That's I add to that? So, yeah, so the way the tool not, itself is only used by the administrators. That's what I understand to be true, but <laughs> or region. I don't say well, or, or, or put it into or, the system, yeah, or, or the region, or the region people. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, but it's, not it's, not a school based. It's CRT. administrative people. It's not um, instructional because everybody else would be. I would say for the majority of it, when Dwayne we did present, uh, it was presented and it was set up for administrators. A principal would have to contact Dwayne if you if wanted anybody added for your school 
to be able to input. So you could check with Dwayne and see if there were any other schools that opened it up to anyone other than their administrator, but there is that capability that a principal could have. Right. Well, what I'm saying is like, like, like Kirsten said, that she has the tool in front of her just to kind of look to see what, what they're doing. A paper one? A paper one. Yeah. So, so the administrators are the only ones that we, I I'm talking county or Literacy or coaches and CRTs do not have access. It, the one, I have all of them that I know, we do not even have access to the online component. The only thing that That's I can I, use is a hard exactly. copy. I can use it as a guide. I can take my notes, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But I know of like the coaches that I know in elementary. That's all we have. Yeah, the principal wanted to access. They would have to request it. Have to be individual. You could find out with Dwayne. They could, but I, I don't know. What well, other than the integrated? So has then, access. I guess the further question on yeah. that would be: Okay, during the year school, yeah. then your administrators can go on. It. Can the regional people then go on and put something in if they're there later, or is that only? I think the only, only person that only from that region is that region is the region is the red. I don't think anybody else from that team, the rep yeah. goes in and puts it in I for that team. That when they did, it was paper. I don't but think I don't think anybody else. Paper and we sat and collectively gathered data, just you know, on what we saw, and then one was sent to me. Mm -hmm. And then you were able to input or whatever from. I, mean, I, I don't think we put input. They just they gathered just and utilized the tool mm -hmm. to give us some data trend feedback as right. one point right. visit. Right. Yeah. And I could, you know, I, we just what they used to have before we had the job. Before the actual tool was basically yeah. online. Correct. Right. Everybody's kind of discussed. And, and everything on that tool is, is the instructional framework. It is every single thing that's right there that, especially, you know, newer teachers and stuff would want to know because that's great feedback for, you know, upcoming observations. And again, in communication, I'm going to just expose our best practices. If your principal sends you the tool in advance, you know, a little notes, yeah, you can look at the tool and say, oh, I see what they have to do it here. I wonder how I can help my assistant exactly. principal. But I don't know if every single principal does that. Every I don't know. I'm just saying the best yeah. practice. Most teachers, I'm thinking most well, principals have shared that exact form of this is what it looks like. So I've even practice with my teachers and watched the videos and remarked watching teaching videos of what they saw and discussed teaching videos. I do have to admit, and forgive me for going off task just for a second, this does remind me of a, of a story from our Coca-Cola days when we had a simple, you know, these several things. Yeah. Kind of like what we did with the uh, Marzano thing. We kind of narrowed it down from 90. <laughs> um, but then we got a couple of guys from Proxy Proper and Gamble, and they came in and we got like one of these, and it was like, oh my God, which was okay, yeah, yeah. And it took longer to fill out the form than it did. And that lasted about a year. So, you know, we'll see what's next year. <laughs> and I'm sure my friends will send it to We're heading into our last 15 minutes. <laughs> so what's, what's your advantage in making these changes? What's in it for you? Honestly, when I left here and I talked to the superintendent, I said, I want to make sure that we put forth this language because it's going to benefit teachers. That was my exact quote for her. So that, and I don't get a whole lot out of this except for administrators being able to, the freedom to provide individual feedback to teachers who all of them have expressed a desire, all of them that I've heard of. I'm sure there's some that I don't you come in, but, <laughs> but the vast majority we've heard from, they're like, there's a mystery out there to them. And if we're working on improving perception, it's a big step if we can provide them that individual feedback. So that's really, there's no secret motive behind it. Be able to offer feedback and then know it's not part of their assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is really liberating. From, 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 from the things that we are hearing. But then again, sometimes you have the part that is there to And it may it's help with some of the misperceptions. Well, it's going to take a lot more work. Mm -hmm. than that. I mean, I think it's going to take more work. Yeah, but but yep, yeah, on you, at least them seeing that it is there, hopefully it will help for those that see that it's in there and 
And again, I want, to, I want to speak for one in high school. Amy, I forget, are you doing AP? Yes. Okay. So it's just been a tough start of the year. I mean, lots of stuff, lots of stuff's coming about that. Like you know, we're, we're, we're dissecting AP now in such a way that, that just sends a message. It's like, okay, there's the constant debate of the gifted versus the open enrollment. And if you want high pass rates, you go with the gifted. To get to them. If you want to do the best for what's right for the best, most kids, it's the open enrollment. But there's not clear messages coming down with that analysis. I'm speaking for me. Amy? I agree. Okay, and that's that's going permeating throughout the AP community out there. Um, whose leadership on the direct curriculum side, I may have mentioned, is changing, shifting, whatever. Um, and then you've got stuff that you guys can't help. I mean, We've had a child abuse we've had before training, and now we got a, um, a mental health training, and then we just got the active shooter training. That's and of course, we push back a little bit, and it's, you know, it's fair enough, fair. It's like, you know, hold on a second. So it's been a, some of this stuff, I will admit that I'm a little paranoid about because it really does feel like we, we, you know, we've been under the gun and the microscope a lot and in the beginning of the year. <laughs> If we knew about all of these trainings, why didn't we go ahead and schedule pre-planning? Pre -planning. That's Do not you? how information has been dealt. I'm just I, 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 I will yield on that one. I, 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 yeah, I, 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 and I should have asked it at the time. I'm sorry, I forgot my role here to represent. We have itinerant um, teachers in our department, DHH, deaf and hard hearing, vision impaired teachers, um, that won't be eligible for any of this. I have speech language pathologists that travel between two or three schools. I don't know how that's going to work. In retention, they will not be because it's required to be a classroom teacher, like our favorite from Old Best and Bright, it's required to be a classroom teacher. But when you but get down language therapists uh, have a roster. But when you but when you uh, get down to the recognition, it's instructional. So if they are considered an instructional contract, then I would say we will be considering including them in the recognition of So the ADE so. subcategories don't open up until recognition. Correct. So but, but so all your ask coaches, all your district personnel are same old game on the But if they contract retention. somebody, that's not a school board employee. So that is correct. correct. I'm just yeah. saying all your coaches, all your literacy coaches, coaches, all your guidance yeah. counselors yeah. are excluded from that retention. Same Thank old you. game on the first I thought or that the second part. Okay, so do but they, those itinerant teachers can be under the recognition? If they are an instructional uh, contract employee, um, then I would, from my perspective, I would say they would be included in the recognition. But they're not. If they're not, a, they're, if, if Joe Smith, DHH teacher, services eight schools. Does he have to be recommended by all eight principals? Does he have to, is it recommended by one? I would say we have some bargaining flexibility in that bottom, uh, negotiable flexibility in that bottom bucket. And I think that's something we definitely need to talk and work out. I'm in favor of including every instructional Absolutely. person allowed by law here. here. So, so we'll, we'll try to work out what we can. Are we at the point where we're going to about to move to review homework? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I'd like to ask a question. No hidden agenda. It's, it's just I want to make sure we're all on the same page. This is a, it's something we have been working on for several years, and uh, again, the legislature has just made a mess of it. I read through uh, both the prince, uh, both the, the superintendent's cover letter and you know Scott's executive summary mm -hmm. on this, and I was kind of surprised. Um, I understand the, necess the necessity for the best foot forward on the superintendents on there. But here, when we talk about all the issues at hand, mm -hmm. 
I was very surprised not to read about a teacher shortage. Now, I know from a substitute teacher, I don't think I'm going to get any pushback from the principals. There, there's, we have a, it, I've been called every day, and I'm not complaining about it. It is what the situation is right now. But I honestly believe, and I've been working against, courtesy of going all the way back to annual contract and a, a shortage of some hard to place teachers, uh, calculus, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have numbers of retention and turnover. I'm just very surprised that this is supposed to go out there and say, here are some of the real problems we're facing that the teacher shortage wasn't reflected in. I think you're gonna, the, the workshop on Monday will be um, the board's opportunity to discuss legislative platform. Mm -hmm. And that might be somewhere that that fits in. And it'll be a workshop where there's opportunity to bring things uh, forward. Because I'm assuming it's during the day. It's yeah. during the day. <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be teaching, and if with any luck, I'll have a walkthrough yes, walk down. Yes, Happy Yeah. Okay. I'll so pass that along. Yeah, please do. I, 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 I just think we have to drive that home for the community to understand. I mean, for example, you know, if we ever, I'm not saying it's reasonable or how going to happen, but if we ever had to go back for a mill, I can talk to some of these people when I say, here are the numbers. You know, I'm never going to win a dance over Okay? You know? Actually, you might. You think he would turn around? Yeah. I, I don't know how a teacher. When he was an accountant in, in, in Iraq, they lost a couple of billion well, dollars. But you know, he could be unpredictable. So can I. Oh, I'm spoken. That's what I'm spoken. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. I gotcha. Um, and we still need to address um, elementary uh, substitute. I'm glad you brought that up. Is there going to be, are you guys going to propose We've got some language? language possibilities, yeah. Okay. Well, we, that can be forthcoming on the next agenda then? Uh -huh. Okay. Can I do a quick recap of some things to make sure I got that? Yes, sir. I think I've heard two openers today. I'll see you as an opener as Article 10 and the board's open, reopener as Article 10. Subsections, yeah. Okay. Got that. So the only other question I had, and again, maybe I just didn't hear the whole conversation. I'm really sorry. I heard a conversation about salaries from a public records request, and I didn't know how many people on the bargaining team have had privy to that, and it's going to come back and be part of bargaining that everybody needs to see it. Uh, we nobody else has seen it in just the two years. We have not seen it see. at all. We haven't seen it at all. Okay. It, is, it is public record. I can tell you it was generated for the superintendent okay. like probably a couple exactly. of weeks ago. He has it in his possession because he requested it. I requested it, but I have not received it yet. Um, so it's all public. Right? I know it's common to so bargain for the two negotiators to have things that the yeah. rest of us don't have, and that's fine. I yeah. like others had it. I think everybody needs it. Okay. 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 No problem. Okay, I've missed something. I had a little bit of here now. I'm just getting here. So, what did I miss? No. There, there was a discussion about a public request for uh, salaries of every employee in the district and every school. It revolved around questions of the new mental health uh, position and some rumors that are going around that it's a significant increase versus what it really is. And we're just going to get the facts. Yeah. It's listed by position, not by name. Not by name. Yeah. I'm going to get into slide, Mama. So when you come across the $103,000 salary, that's not mine. That's, yeah. that's, that's a, a regional director salary. You ready to set a date? Do we have a date? Let's do it. I miss you guys. <laughs> Come back together as soon as possible. <laughs> it's school time, so you guys, all our school folks, we like Wednesdays.
23rd is a Wednesday. In October? Yes. Uh, I'm thinking that an awful lot of teachers are going to be really upset. That's a long time. That's a long time. And, and I get it. Some people, because they're going to have different homecomings, different days, different things. So, you know, my team, I'm flexible and all that. Um, uh, 17th. If, um, October 17th, we won't attend. Yeah, we won't be here. Well, that's 10th? The 10th is a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a county office. How come I have a principal business meeting on both days? We do. Are they splitting them? No, you've got a principal's business meeting in Eustis that, <laughs> that morning, and then and that's on the 10th. And then um, the 20th or the 16th is the um, actual principal walkthrough meeting. What was on the um, night? High school. Mm -hmm. Oh, the night wasn't good for you guys. Okay. 16th is PSD. Oh, shoot. We can't get on the last PSD, right? PSD, right? Did we shut down? I'd be willing to, to give up proctoring for. <laughs> 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 oh, you're such a great sacrifice. I, I really would do that. that. It'll be afterwards anyway. You, you'd be finished yeah. after. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping you yeah. <laughs> said it because it would be late for you. Yeah. Yeah. I do have a 504 now. Yeah, it's going to go up on the 10th. I'm good with the 10th, and it'll be in Tavares. What day? 10th and Tavares at 3.30. Mm -hmm. Say that again. 10th and Tavares at 3.30. No, it's a Thursday. That's a Thursday. Can, can three teachers get done with the start? Oh, wait. 3.30 messes us up. Four, it needs to be four. Four, four at least, four. maybe, and then more of the teachers. Oh, okay. We have to. And that's going to be in Tavares. Right. So, I'll be out of town. So, I'll be here for the principal meeting at one time. Yeah. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. I'm not going to. I think we're going to be out of town. Wow. That's my first grandchild. That's my first grandchild. She's got a t-shirt approved. Alright, are we done? Four hours.